everyone. Great to great to see everybody. Uh, really sorry that it's on video and not in person. Um, just wanted you to know that um, as per the text message during the week, we uh, we actually did a setup. I'm just going to show you the setup at that, that church this morning. Um, but we put tables and chairs around. We tried to meet the social distance. We did all of those things. We can actually fit about 65 or 7 people in the church building, but the requirements uh, at stage two level that the government released for um, around food and around toilets, to be honest, and around some of the other things just made it too difficult for us. And so as an eldership, we felt like um, we needed to wait until stage three. Um, that's gonna be released on the 29th of June. So um, we're looking forward to that and we're expecting that we'll be able to be back after that. Um, so we are really sorry for the, that we've got to wait a little bit longer, but you know what? We are the church, us the people, we are the church. And so us interacting with each other, catching up with each other, doing all the things we've been doing, we've just got to do that for a couple more weeks and, and we can move on. Um, guys, so I want to say have a great week. Um, today, I'm really excited that um, we've got uh, Pastor Carl Housebrook from the Church of Christ. Carl's going to share the message with us today. Um, I've had the privilege of hearing the message already. Um, you're going to love it. I absolutely loved it. And it's such a timely word for us. So, uh, Carl, we appreciate your time and we're looking forward to hearing from you in the next minute. Thanks, Carl. And thanks, everyone. Bye. So, good morning and welcome to our service. First of all, thank you, Rob, for the opportunity that I have to be able to speak, you know, to the congregation, to the Lighthouse. And uh, thank you for the friendship and thank you for the love and the grace that I have received over the years from you guys. Um, let's pray together. Father God, thank you in the name of Jesus that you open up the word of God for me, for everyone who is watching, because we need you to speak. And I just pray, Lord, in, uh, in the weakness in how I present that you will speak directly to the hearts of people and that it will be the Holy Spirit Father who open up the word for each and every person thank you Lord that you are able to move the word far beyond our imagination and to open up opportunities that we didn't think is possible and this is what I'm praying for everyone who is listening and thank you Lord in the name of Jesus that I bless every person that is listening to your word and thank you that your word and your word only will transmit into the hearts of people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning I ask you, I want to ask you actually a very serious question. I want to ask you if you have been angry at God before, or disappointed in yourself or in God, at the church or at the people around you. I don't know what your answer is. I am, unfortunately I have to tell you, I have been at a place where I was very angry and very disgruntled at God, at the church, at people, at myself. And this morning when I present this story, there's different characters that we are going to look at and the different responses to their circumstances. And as a minister, I've seen a lot of things in my life, even as a, just as a, as a Christian, as a child of God. I have sit with people who have trusted the Lord that their baby wouldn't die. And unfortunately, the baby have died. I've sit with people who have trusted um, that the Lord will heal their diseases and they haven't experienced that healing. I have experienced a lot of disappointments in, and, and prayers that is unanswered. But the story, the reason why I'm actually presenting this story is so to see that all things work together for those who trust the Lord. And uh, let us get encouragement from the scripture if, if you are angry, or if you have been angry or disappointed, maybe you can get encouragement out of this story. Now, where I'm reading is 2 Kings chapter 5, this verse 1 to 15. And the story goes like this. Now, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. And I want you to picture this. this the story starts with uh, this army general that is a very, very honorable person in the eyes of his master. He's, he's held in high esteem. Um, he enjoys the privileges of being in favor with 
the, a very powerful king of Syria at the time, a king that actually <coughs> was a world leader, dominated the earth, and this general is in favor with this powerful person. And he, I can imagine his circumstances, his home, um, you know, was well rewarded for this uh, stance. So he has high esteem in his society, people honor him, young guys esteem to be like him, and uh, um, everyone was, was having the greatest respect. But most of all, the most important thing is that the king was actually esteeming him. And the reason why he was is because by him the Lord hath given victory to Syria. You know, so even it was acknowledged that there was a supernatural favor on this man's life. He was also a mighty man of value, but a leper. So suddenly something happened to him that was a bit out of his control. He got sick. And leprosy was like cancer today. Um, there wasn't a healing for it. Uh, when you got leprosy, um, it, it actually meant that you are actually cast out of society, that you're going to die at one point and in a horrible death. And you, you are going to be isolated from your family. You're not going to see your family or your friends. And this, all this honor and riches and power, nothing could save this man from the trouble that he is in, you know, and um, he was in this pitiful situation, really. And I was wondering, you know, when I read it, I, I thought, man, this man has everything going for him. And suddenly sickness appear and it changed his life forever because everything just in the, the drop of a hat has been taken from him. And I think he could be really disappointed, you know, going through that situation. And, and here he is in that situation um, and there's no, no out of it. Verse 2, the story continues. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel and she waited on Naaman's wife. Now, this is the second person in our story. Now, I want to imagine this little girl. You know, she had a, a, a really a happy family life. By the sound of it, if we read the story further, they were really trusting the Lord. They were people of God. And suddenly, at one point, a Syrian army came, destroyed the city, burned it down to the ground, devastate everyone, possibly kill her parents, and took her as a slave. And her life was totally upset. How can it happen? How can it happen to me? How can it happen to the people of God that I'm now in slavery? That, you know, all these terrible things. I, I don't even want to mention the journey that she went through to end up in the house of Naaman to be a girl waiting on his wife to get that position. All the abuse that goes with it. And, uh, but it sounds like she was really a, 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 a person of faith, a person who trusts the Lord because... Her response to this, then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in some, some area. So she hasn't lost her faith through the trials and the tribulation. You know, in her distress and in her difficult circumstances, it sounds to me that she holds on to the Lord. And she has trust in the Lord and she knows what the Lord can do. And she was actually at the point where she actually offered this help to her enemy. Uh, so this is, this is the second person. I don't know where you are, you know. I don't know if life has turned to the worst. Maybe, you know, you are, you are captured by circumstances. You're a Christian. You've been raised in a, in a, in a, in a really good family. Um, and there's no warrant for, for a sudden change uh, or an intervention that is out of your control from a political, I don't know, from, from circumstantial things. But this girl, it seems to me, hold on to her faith. She didn't hold grudges against God. She didn't question God. And she was offering and evangelizing even and said, I've got my God can solve this problem. And, and I want you to see how strategic this is because I also want you to understand that God didn't cause this. 
he didn't plan it from the beginning that this girl would go through all this trouble and pain so that she can help Naaman but he used the circumstance to help Naaman because the girl has stayed with God that's what I want the point that I want to make that God can use that circumstances to to bring and to change history because she was the instrument in the hand of God even if she went through that she was the cause that Naaman found God uh, and I want to mention that all right so she said to her mistress, if only my masters were, were with the prophet who is in some area, for he would heal him and his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, this is what I hear. You know, I hear there's a prophet. I hear there's, there's a God that can deal with my circumstance, that can heal my problem because of the faith of this little girl. It must be a tremendous faith that she carried, that he actually bought into it, that he actually went to the king, the powerful king, to, to tell him and to say, you know, there is a solution for me. And uh, so the king got excited about it and he wrote a letter to the king of Israel and he said, well, I'm sending my best man to you and you heal him. And this is the next person that I'm coming. And suddenly this poor king is out of his debt because he's a believer too. He believes in God, but there's now somebody that demand a solution from God, which he believes he cannot supply. You know, he the, the Bible says he actually tore his clothes and he was in distress. He is in his house and I can imagine sitting there and thinking, what on earth am I going to do? This, this problem is just too much for me. You know, how on earth are we going to solve this problem? Is that you? You know, you've been a Christian. You've been around for a long time. You believe that God can heal. But when that opportunity arises, how do you respond? I'm not saying you will respond. I'm just asking the question, is it you? Is it me? You know, when an opportunity arrives to make a breakthrough for God and this big problem arises in, in our life, how do we respond? But the story doesn't end there. Luckily for the king, the prophet heard about this calamity going on in the palace and he was very happy to invite him and said, send the man over to me. So the prophet is the, is the next person in the story, a man of faith. And uh, he let Naaman come to him. And this is where the story really gets interesting. Um, verse 9 then Naaman went with his horses and chariot and he stood at the door of Elijah's house Elisha's house and Elisha sent a messenger to him saying go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean but Naaman became furious and went away and said indeed I said to myself I just want to stop here. Do you see that word? Naaman went ballistic. He was so angry at the response that he was, the, the, the thing that he received at the time. And the reason why he was so angry is because he had predetermined how his prayers should be answered. Um, and I want to tell you a little story uh, before, let me just go and finish what I want to say first. So Naaman was furious because in his mind, he actually thought if he rocks up at Elias's house, there will be a ceremony. He thought in his mind, this is how God's going to work. This man is going to wave his hand like this. Um, it's going to be like a thunder from heaven. And, and, and sometimes we as people, when we pray, we want God to act in a certain way. We expect him to act in a certain way. And, and, and in doing so, we miss the miracle that God wants to do in us. Because there is a miracle waiting for us. There is an opportunity waiting for us. But because we want God in that certain box. We want, him, we want this man of God to wave his hand in a certain way. We want people to visit us in a certain way. Or to speak to us in a certain way. We miss what God wants to do. And sometimes the solution is very simple. We have, just have to listen what God wants for us. And not trying to dictate what God needs to do. So in my ministry in the Kalahari I... I had this one problem because I traveled so much and it was a dirt road all the time and the dirt road was just horrible. Um, I lost a tire every time that I was driving on that dirt road. And uh, as a Pentecostal person, you know, I took all the advice that I can get. And that's why I say sometimes the gospel don't work for me. You know, I don't know about you, but 
you know, I have applied some of those principles and because I wanted to work, it didn't work for me. Um, so I was anointing my tires, I speak life, I was rebuking the devil, um, I was praying, I was casting fear out of my heart, um, I was uh, confessing that I do believe and I do not have fear and I was, I was pumped because I'm going to show the devil what's going on this morning. So I anoint, I double anoint, I, I took uh, grape juice and communion and I anoint all my tires and I pray all the way, uh, worship, you know, because the worship break the yoke and uh, the moment I, I hit uh, the gravel road, uh, normally, you know, you would go about 10 or 20 k's, but that morning after I was really on fire, um, I hit the gravel road and it was about 200 meters and I just heard plop, 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 plop and the youth came to a still stand and I was furious because I thought you know if I do this the the angels of the Lord will carry my youth over this and I thought the Lord should have done this and I thought this should have worked and I was angry I was I was I was angry I so I'm so glad nobody was there with a camera because I was seriously angry so I went out of the youth I kicked the tire, hurt my foot in the process. That, that's how, how furious I was. And uh, I, I took it off. Uh, and because it's so many bull dust on the road, I was covered with dust. And, and there was a church waiting for me for a message. I was dirty ass. And uh, so I took off the tire. I throw it on the ground and I sit on it. And I literally cried. And I said, I am done. I'm finished. This gospel does not work for Carl Hasbrook. How can I preach this gospel if it doesn't work? And when I sort of got over myself a bit, I, I hear the quiet voice of God telling me a very simple thing. And I hate that. I hate it to hear it. And he said, you know, you go in there, Carl, and you ask the farmers what sort of tires do you need to put on your, on your youth? <laughs> I go, you're kidding me. I'm not going to do that. You know, um, this is not... How it work, Lord? You need to protect me. But I obeyed, and as I go in, I asked the, the farmers. Um, you see, pride is, a, is an ugly thing. You know, sometimes we just need, and that's the case with Naaman. You know, uh, in his response, he thought, you know, he needs better treatment from God, from everyone. Is that you? And uh, so I, I, I swallow my pride, and I said, what sort of tires are you guys using? And the guys say, ah, oh, it's this sort of tire. And I write it down um, and I went to the tire shop on the Monday morning to discover it was a really expensive tire. And I go, oh, you know, that should, that's surely from the devil. I cannot afford this sort of tire, but let's go through. That's what I heard. And uh, so I put the tires on, paid every cent in my bank account for the tires. And, and I could feel the pain and bitterness in my heart as I put that tires on because it's unfair how can the Lord do this to me you know he doesn't protect my tires um, he, uh, he he doesn't hear my prayers my the things is not working and he's now taking all the money in my bank account how can he do that to me his servant you know I, I, I take a lot of time you know uh, and, uh, and sa sacrifice to preach this gospel and uh, as I was winching a person came in and he said Carl you know, how are you? So glad to see you. Uh, come and have a coffee in my office. You know, I've been thinking about you this whole week. So I went and uh, the person was inquiring what I'm doing. And uh, I, I told him happily, this is what I'm doing. And he said, oh, by the way, you know, I've been thinking. You know, I've got a fleet, uh, a, a massive fleet. I run a transport company and uh, so I've been thinking you've been plotting around in the Kalahari and I can just imagine it cost you a fortune so I've ordered a fleet card for you here it is it will cover all your petrol and your tires God bless you and that enabled me that incident that I thought the Lord is not with me, the Lord is against me, the Lord doesn't care, was the door and access to the biggest breakthrough in my ministry in the Kalahari so that I have unlimited resources to travel 
the north path of that Kalahari and I did. So I want to tell you, I don't know what you're going through. But I want to tell you that all things work together for good for those who love you. The end of the story, verse 15, and I'm finishing. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and come and stood before him and said, Indeed, now I know that there is a God in Israel. And that was that little girl. Through the pain, that was him, his servants around him. And everyone in the story was an instrument in God's hand to bring a powerful, honorable man to show him the living God. May God bless you. Let's pray together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this wonderful congregation. I pray for every person. And Father, my heart break for them, for everyone that is going through a tough time. And everyone is asking a question, why is this happening to me? But I ask you, Lord, to show each and every person the greater purpose of their lives and that you can use the most horrific situation for good for those who love you. And I just bless every crooked and hard situation, Father, and that you will heal that and that you will bring it to your purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Mm -hmm.